I believe that every person that's here this morning is here because God had you in mind and he has a divine appointment in store for you. Whether you're the first time you've been here or you've been here and you've been in the way for a long time, um, I believe God brought us together for such a day and such a time as this. How many know that life is filled with promise? And how many know life is filled with problems? How many know that uh, life is a wonderful opportunity and life is filled with obstacles? The single greatest factor in your life is how you see life. You can uh, jot that down. We're in a series called Wanted, You Fully Alive, because God created us to live fully alive. Fully alive, experiencing the best of what He is who he is, and through our lives, experiencing his presence. The way you see life is the most important factor, and there's only basically two ways to see life. You can see life through eyes of fear, or you can see life through eyes of faith. There's basically only two ways that you see life. Now, I just want to point out one more time, not only is life filled with problems, your life is filled with problems. But your life is filled with promise, too, because God has in store for you and for me a purpose and a plan that he will work through in and through us if we will only keep our eyes on him. In Ephesians, it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart, how many knew you you had eyes in your heart? That's weird. Can you imagine that? (laughs) Now, spiritual. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance. The real act of discovery doesn't consist in finding new lands, but the real act of discovery consists of seeing with new eyes. Now, Many of you, many of us, walked in the door today, and as Pastor Peter said so well, um, you came with baggage, meaning that you probably came in with some of you, not everybody. Some of you just are carefree. You don't ever have problems. So God bless you and encourage the rest of us. But you came through the door with uh, problems, with things that seem overwhelming, and God says, I am with you. I am with you, and I will see you through if you will only trust me. Now, I presented the first half of this message last week, so it is based on a story in the book of Numbers, which is a book in the Bible. It's actually uh, the fourth book. It goes, uh, I think, isn't it? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. So if you go to the front of the book and you go four books in, you get Numbers, Numbers. And the reason it is called the book of Numbers is because God asked of the people of Israel some 3,000 plus years ago to count how many warrior men there were. Uh, And there were just over 600,000 Israelites, warrior men. Uh, Guesstimates about, with women and children, maybe 2 million to 3 million people. God delivered them out of Egypt. At that day, Egypt was the most powerful government and kingdom on the planet and God brought them out with many mighty miracles they went through the you know they got trapped between the Red Sea and God led them to the Red Sea and the chariots and the and uh, Pharaoh Yul Brenner's army was coming after them and uh, God protected them and parted the Red Sea and they walked through on dry ground and God provided manna and they fed them in the wilderness you, you read through this uh, it talks about it in those first few books about the people of Israel about three plus thousand years ago. Now what happened was that they went through this desert and they came to a place called Kadesh. You probably today are at Kadesh. Kadesh is a place in your life where it is a critical time when you make a decision to see with eyes of faith and not eyes of fear. So they came to this place called Kadesh and they were given they were given the opportunity to go in and possess the promised land where now Israel is today, it's amazing if you think about it that this little nation called Israel is still in the news almost every day. 
Is that fascinating? Mm -hmm. Just this, and it's a, con a country of maybe six or seven million people today, and it's always frontline news. Do you think God might be in this or something? I mean, how did this people survive and they're still there? So this people, they had seen also, and by the way, it says that during the day, they had a place, a tent in the middle of their gathering of two plus million people. There was a tent there called the tabernacle, and that's where the presence of God was revealed. It says during the day, there was a pillar of, there was a cloud that hovered over the tent. At night, there was a pillar of fire. Now, God's presence was seen every day that they were in the wilderness. Every day. They could look over and it says, and, and Moses was given instructions, when the cloud moves, you move. And so God was leading them, and uh, they saw the very presence of God, and then God says, okay, I want you to go in. We're gonna, here's the promised land. This is what I've promised to your ancestors. This is what you can possess. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a great promise, great possibilities. So they sent in spies for 40 days. They came back, and the spies said, it is just exactly like this. A great promise, but big problem. The people in the land are giants. There's so many problems there, and so we can't do this. Now think about it. They've been a little over a year, and God delivered them from the most powerful kingdom, the most powerful government, on the planet of that day, they were still looking at God's visible presence, the cloud by day and the pillar by night, and they said, we can't do this. There were two that said, we can. And Joshua and Caleb said, we can do this. But ten people said, we can't. And ten people, why is it so important that we see with eyes of faith? Why is that important? Because ten people tripped up three million people. Ten people tripped up 600,000 warriors, and it cost them all their lives. Everybody over the age of 20, because they said, we can't do this, they lost the opportunity because they couldn't see with eyes of faith. The most important thing, the most important thing about your life is the way you see life. Now, some of you, the waves, you, you've got a tsunami of problems going on. Uh, this is a little gathering of our prayer requests over the last month or two. Uh, I went through them, and I've continued to go through them. Here's people. Uh, incredible problems. Salvation of my family. My father needs healing. Cancer, 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 cancer. You think that's a problem we're facing? Heart surgery. Restoration of my family. Homeless. MS, cancer, need a home to rent, grandson wanting to commit suicide, jobs, family relationships. Do you think we're facing some challenges today? You know, if you're facing a problem today, don't panic. God is with you. May he open the eyes of our heart that we can see. Because how you see life is the most important thing about your life. Should I risk telling a little story? I'll risk it because it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. I've told it before, and, uh, but some of you have it memorized now. <laughs> how you see life determines how you live life. It's the most important factor in your life. So this is just a funny little story, and hopefully it's funny. If it's not, you, you try the delivery, it works. It doesn't work. There was this successful businessman. He owned this beautiful little sports car. He owned a cabin up in the mountains. And every weekend, he would drive to his cabin in the mountains, enjoy the time there. He would love driving his car through the windy two-lane road on the mountain going up to his cabin. And he did that every Saturday morning, and it was just it was a buzz. He just had a great time in his little... You know, I love the car commercials on TV. They just look so good, you know. You just go, you got to get one of those if you're going to be happy. So he had one of those. And so one Saturday morning, he's driving up to his cabin on this two-lane, windy road through the mountains. And as he's going along, he sees coming around the corner of a blind corner up in front of him, a car is coming toward him. The car is swerving out of control. First, 
over in his lane and then over back in their lane and just trying to get control. And so he begins to slow and finally he comes to a dead stop right in the road and he's going, this is the end. This person's weaving back and forth, coming at them. And just before this car coming at him crashes into him, they get over in their lane and get, start by. And just as they get by right next to him and he's come to a dead st stop, he hears from their car this yell. Pig! <laughs> and the guy is sitting there, dead still in his little sports car, and he's thinking to myself, this person almost killed me. They were going to take me out. It was almost lights out for me. And now, as they pass me, they call me a pig. <laughs> and so before the car could get too far past, he turns in a quick rebuttal to the pig and says, Sal! <laughs> he goes, this is incredible. They would call me names, and I'm the one that was threatened, and I got back at him. And then in his frustration and in his feeling of anger, he puts the car in gear, and he puts the foot feet down, and he barrels around the blind curve only to run into the pig. How many of you have ever done that in your life? <laughs> Somebody came alongside and they're trying to help you and you think they're calling you names and how you see it is how you live it, right? And we need to see with eyes of faith, not eyes of fear. Seeing with eyes of fear, and we did these last week, but I'm just going along so I can kind of catch people up. Seeing with eyes of fear, we see problems as defeat. Now, some of us in this room are faced with some incredible problems. But your problem and my problem is not the end of me or you. It's not the last time you're going to have problems. It wasn't the first time. You're going to have problems. Life, have you noticed, is a series of problems. In fact, either you've just come out of a serious problem, or you're in a serious problem, or for those of you that are at peace right now, you're heading into a serious problem. It's going to happen. But your problems are not the end of you. We see problems as defeat when we see with eyes of fear. Secondly, we suffer memory loss. We forget how far God... Did you know that God brought you this far? You got here on your own? I'm a self-made man. We're, there's not much to you then. And let me just hit the pause button right there. And I just want to say, uh, all men of all ages, young, middle-aged, old, single, married, wanting to be married. <laughs> Don't say it. Older men, join with us for just a few hours to get our focus around what really matters in life. And uh, join us next Saturday evening, bring along your sons, if you have sons, bring along your parents, your, your father, uh, your grand, all ages, all ages. Do you know that when they did the census, God instructed them to do in numbers, it said, number all the warriors 20 years of age and older. And so we want to go at least that, but I drop it down to 12 and 13 as well. All the warriors 12 and 13 and above next Saturday night, just for a time to help us strengthen how we see life. Eyes of faith, eyes of fear. They suffered memory loss because they f forgot how much God had done for them. God had provided food for them. God had provided water for them. He'd taken care of them for over a year. He has been personally taking care of them. Did you know God has been personally taking care of you? But we suffer memory loss. We forget the miracles God has performed. Number three, if we see with eyes of fear, we think little of ourselves. It says they seemed, we seem like grasshoppers. Grasshopper. We seem like grasshoppers in, their, in our own eyes as we compared ourselves. And then if you see with eyes of fear, you make your, the results, your future predictable. When you see with eyes of fear, you will get what you want. In Numbers chapter 14, it says they cried all night. They complained bitterly, and they compared their circumstances to what they had before. So you want to go back to Egypt? They said, ah, oh, I wish we would have just 
been able to die in Egypt. At least we had plenty to eat there. It was peaceful. They forgot what slavery was like. Or we should just die here in the desert rather than go in there and be slaughtered. The results are predictable. We become discontented. We get discouraged. We are defeated. We become moaners. How many know anybody that's a moaner? How many know anybody that's grumpy? Don't be pointing at people. People are pointing. Don't be pointing. <laughs> Moaners and murmurers and martyrs. Oh, that we would only die here in the desert. Let's go backwards. People who feel like failures are the biggest critics. The most damaging thoughts we entertain are lies about ourselves and about God. What you see is what you get when it comes to God. And a key verse in Numbers 14, it says, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you everything I heard you say. Out of your fear, you said, we should die in the desert. You know, some of you have been so much at the end of your rope, you can't even find enough of the rope to tie a knot. But don't, don't give up. See your life through eyes of faith. You are unique. You matter to God. He knows where you are. He will see you through. Now, I've found that God, if I look over my shoulder, God has seen me through in so many ways. I go, how did I get this far? Only, as we sang about, the grace and mercy of God. And it's amazing, though, how quickly I forget all that's happened behind me because i got this new problem right in front of me. Or I've got this problem that won't go away. It just keeps getting worse. What you see is what you get. But seeing with eyes of faith, Caleb said, he interrupted him when they are given the report, and Caleb, one of the spies that went into the land, he said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't. Caleb said, we can the others, 10, said, we can't. Who was right? They both were. Because how you see it is how you live it. If you see with eyes of fear and you say, no, I can't, then you can't. Because what is the most important thing we need as a people in our lives? People that are not, we need in us the strength to trust God to put our trust in him. We need people who are not afraid, and we need to be those people, and that's why we come together on Sunday morning. At some measure, may we encourage each other's faith as we walk out and say, we can, by God's grace, we can go forward. We will make it through. Seeing with eyes of faith, Caleb said we can. The 10 said we can't because of their faith or lack of it. They were both right. Jesus said this, He said uh, to those that were blind and uh, they wanted healing, Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be to you. Jesus said to Nicodemus in a nighttime council, he said to Nicodemus, now here's the dilemma. That's what's so exciting about the people that were baptized in water because they have entered into a new kingdom. Unless you are born again, Jesus said, you can never see the kingdom of God. Now, he's not talking about your future down the road. How many want to go to heaven when you die? That's good. That's really good. For the rest of you, oh, man. <laughs> I, I've never met anybody yet that, you know, we always, when our, even our people we know, have you ever heard anybody after they die? Everybody says they've gone to be with uh, the big guy. They're watching over us right now. Everybody wants to go to heaven. God wants you to see the kingdom of God that is today. He wants you to have eyes to see that there is this invisible kingdom that's the reality of life. And not just see that someday I'm going to be rescued, but today you are living in the rule and reign of Jesus Christ because you have eyes to see. I love these. You go through the scriptures many places. Then God opened Hagar's eyes. That's a story in itself. You can look that up. Suddenly their eyes were opened. They recognized Jesus. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, young man and he could see. Verse 
There is a person in history, his name is Abraham. God picked him out to be the father of the nation of Israel. And, and uh, also in the following through, Abraham also became the father of all the Arab nations there in the Middle East. Abraham is the father of all those people. And so God had a special relationship with Abram, and he said, Lord, the Lord said to Abram, lift up your eyes from where you are and look. How many of you need to lift up your eyes from where you are and look? You need to lift up your eyes. I need to lift up my eyes and look. Does that make sense? Because when we focus on the problem only, the problem grows. The more I focus on the problem, the greater the problem. I need to not deny the problems there. I don't believe it. It doesn't happen. I'm not one of those kind of people. Just deny that it exists. It doesn't exist. Baloney. It's still there. But I need to, that was Greek. Um, I need to not only be aware of the problems I face, but the promise I have as I see God working in my life. From where you are, look, all that you see, I will give to you. What do we need today more than anything else? We need to see with eyes of faith. So, let me just bring forward a little observation here. When we see with eyes of faith, first of all, we restate the obvious. We restate the obvious. In John 16, 33, Jesus made this promise. In this life, you will have problems. In this world, you will have trouble. So, restate the obvious. Life famous book written 20 years ago, started with this very sentence, life is difficult. So restate the obvious. This is not uh, pie in the sky. It should be easy. Let's go through this. Life is difficult. And uh, it, you're going to have problems. And once you get, you say, if I could only get this, I, I've, I've discovered, I go, if I can only get this one solved, whew, then I can relax for the rest of my life only to find out that I run right into another problem. So, we restate the obvious. Life is difficult. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're going to have some problems going forward. (laughs) Some of you are enjoying that way too much. The second thing, if we're going to see with eyes of faith, is that we remember our God reigns. We remember that we serve the living God. Now, I just put that out there as a challenge, because if you can find any other semblance, any other other kind of God that measures up to the God of the Bible and, and the God that Jesus represented and talked about, if you can find any better alternative, please step up and tell us. But we, ultimately, we remember that our God reigns, that we serve the living God, not just a God. We serve the living God. Now, people, you're arrogant about that. No, that's my life. I didn't make myself. God made me. And he's got me this far, and he is the God. And let me just add one more thing. If the God that you worship is not a God that you can love wholeheartedly, then you're not worshiping the right God. Did you get that? If he's not a God that you can embrace wholeheartedly, then you're not walking and following and looking at the right God because he's a God of power and peace and love. He's a God of of, uh, encouragement. He wants to help us. Remember that our God reigns, Psalm 107. So we have this old song. We've sung a chorus now, and it's amazing how over the years now choruses get old, and uh, the one that we would sing is, Our God reigns. Our God reigns. God still reigns today. It's just that we've lost sight and we see so many things around us and we get fearful. And God says, I want you to see through eyes of faith and that I'm the living God 
and nothing, nothing, nothing can be in your life, upon your life, that I can't see you through. By the way, he doesn't take it away. Get out. He sees you through, through. So remember, our God reigns. Another, if we're going to see with eyes of faith, we recognize that we means we. We means we. Now, I've heard this many times, several times, even in the last week on the news, is that we, as a nation, our core issue is that we believe in individualism, that we can, each one gets to do their own thing. Now, let me just tell you, uh, that's a really weak way to go, because if you're alone, standing alone, you can't stand very well. So I just want you to tell you, like Lori talked about the ladies coming together. Ladies, you need to get together with other ladies. Men, you need to get together with other men. Now, the ladies, they, 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 they trump us on all that. They, they have a thing about they can get together, and, and it just goes. And we men go, leave me alone. I'm going to my cave. Am I right? But we means we. If you're going to live with eyes of faith, you need to have others in your life that are speaking faith in your life. That come alongside and say, you know, God's not done and he's not dead and he's still with you and we can do it. So what Caleb says is we can. Caleb didn't say I can. He said we can. And the naysayer said we can't. We means we. If you're going to live with faith, I need other people in my life. And I've had people one-on-one. -on -one. I've been in meetings like this I've, where I needed it just the right time. We together encourage my faith so I could just take another baby step. Just another step. Recognize that we means we. And if we're going to live with eyes of faith, that we repeat God's promises. Hang on to God's promises. For instance, I will never leave you. I'm not going to abandon you. Your parents may have abandoned you. Your father may have walked out. But God says, I'm not going to abandon you. Here's another I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Just when you think it's over, God can give you strength to make it through. Here's another. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hang on to the promises. My God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So we repeat the promises that God has given to us. And if you just get one promise and just hang on to that one, and whenever you're hammered, just keep saying it. He's never going to leave me. He's not going to allow me to go thing, through things that I can't make it. He's going to give me the strength, if I'll only look to him, to get through. Not to get around, not to get over, not to do away with, but to get through. So we repeat his promises. What do we need more than anything else today? People that are not afraid to trust God. What do you see? Do you see your life as opportunities or is it just obstacles? Problems or possibilities? Some of you today, you're living at Kadesh, critical point, and your decision determines your destiny. Whether you're going to walk forward with faith, daring to go where no man has gone before. The decision determines our destiny. What giants are you facing today? Not everybody is, but many people in this room. There are giants in the land, in your land. They are problems beyond your control. And God says, we can. You're going to make it through. Trust me. Join together with others that encourage your faith. We can. We can. If you feel like giving up, if you think you'd like to go back to Egypt, don't! I pray that, the, that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future God has called you to share. You and I will live and die according to our faith. Our God reigns. I'd like to invite uh, 
Deanna, if you would be willing to come to the piano. And here's what I'm going to do this morning. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand, and then I would like to invite everybody in the room that is right now facing giants in your land, in your promises. There are problems beyond your ability to handle. I love that uh, Gideon lesson, and uh, Priscilla, is that her name? And um, in my weakness... God's strength is perfected. And that's exactly where he wants us to live so that we're learning daily to trust him. And some of you have trusted him in the past, but trust begins all over again every day. So some of you are facing incredible obstacles, cancer, broken relationships. Some of you need work. children that are in trouble. And if you'd say, you know, there are giants in this promised land, but I want to see with eyes of faith. And uh, I want to not be held hostage to my fears. I want God to work mightily, and I need him to work in my life, and we can see miracles take place. The giants are not too great. So I'd like to invite all of you to stand. And if you, in a picture, are at Kadesh today, a point of decision about whether you can face the giants in your life or not, you need to see with eyes of faith. You say, God, help me. I want to trust you. I want to invite you, as soon as Deanna begins to sing, to come down to the front if you say, man, have I got some giants in my life. And uh, I need to see with eyes of faith. Does this make sense? Now, God's been talking to some of you. As a matter of fact, God's been talking to all of you, just some of you weren't listening. He's always willing to share with us. Almighty God. Revealed through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is God. Open the eyes of our heart. It's tough to build faith, to get our eyes off the problems. Everything pulls against us. Almighty God, by your spirit, open the eyes of our heart that we can see that our difficulties are not the end of us, that our challenges are not beyond you, that we have great obstacles. But you are a God of promise. Come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. May there be breakthroughs in those who stand here at the front, breakthroughs that they would cast off the fear that has held them hostage and that they would see with eyes of faith that there is nothing, nothing so great that you can't see them through, that you are strong, in their weakness. Open the eyes of our heart. May we, in this moment, be enlightened in order that we can know the hope to which God has called us, the riches, the riches of his glorious inheritance. Thanks for joining with us today in our streaming of our service and our message. We're grateful that you joined with us. And if we can serve in any way, we'd be glad to do that. Just check out our website. That'll get you connected in any way that you might like to. And uh, that is greenvalleychurch.net. And we wish you the best and know that you really do matter to God.
Have a great day.